introduction. Well, Keith, um, I really mean that. You've, 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 you've helped a lot of people. I, I, I see the emails every day come in. People, uh, some of them even make me laugh. They're like, Keith Newmeyer is my retirement plan. Um, you are an overachiever. You're re uh, relentless when it comes to working. Every time I talk to you, you're in a different country. And uh, I want to get a full update on the resource sector with you today. What happened at the Fed uh, recently? Uh, and also uh, an important update on First Mining Finance, which is your gold company that is less than a year and a half old. Uh, that's one of the fastest growing gold developers in the world, um, as well as First Majestic Silver and even a new silver stock that you have publicly stated you'll be making a, a significant investment into it. So let's, uh, let's start off with the resource sector. Everybody was having fun. They're on their summer vacations, having a party because mining stocks are up three, four hundred percent, and then we've had this gut wrenching per, uh, correction. Where are we in the junior resource sector? Well, many people, you know, that are, are our calls, you know, or pardon me, our phone is ringing off the hook as well. You know, we, we've had a lot of investors calling in over the last couple of weeks asking the same question, and you know, I. And some of the investors that are calling in have not ever invested in the mining sector before. So, you know, you know, your listeners need to know that the mining sector is extremely volatile. It's very much the same as the biotech sector. You know, they, you know, it, it's, um, you know, as the metal price moves, the stocks move and the, the stocks tend to move, uh, exponentially, you know, when, when the metal moves. So if the metal's down one day, the stocks are down even more. If the metal's up one day, the stocks are up even more than, you know, that day. So, you know, it's just the way it is. And if you look at, you know, the whole bull run from 2002 to 2012, I can tell you that it did not go straight up. You know, there was many, many times during that 10 year period that we thought, or many people thought that the bull mark was over and it wasn't, you know, it, it, it corrected for a period of a few months and then it just exploded higher. And, uh, uh, you know, that's what we're seeing now. This correction that is occurring as we see today or the last couple of weeks is the first correction since February. That's truly incredible, uh, you know, because so many people, as Rick Rule often says, they base their uh, most you know, immediate experience off of their future, most, uh, you know, immediate expectations. And of course, the mining stocks did have a big run, specifically your companies, uh, First Majestic Silver. Uh, it's, it's the biggest winner in most people's portfolio. It's the world's uh, most primary silver producer. And then First Mining Finance has been an amazing winner for people and, and still deeply undervalued uh, at these levels. Uh, Keith, um, when it comes to the mining shares, um, how long do these corrections? I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to give people an idea who are first investing in these companies or this sector. What should be their expectation? I mean, do, do we go flat for a few months? Do you think? Uh, do you think this is kind of just digesting and backfilling here, and then we'll be off to the races again? Um, you know, I guess to put it in the uh, the most understandable way, what inning are we in in this bull market? Well, absolutely the first inning. And, and, you know, I'm a big believer in seasonality. You know, the, the stock market or the, or the mining shares trade, you know, very much on a seasonal basis. And there's really no, uh, reason for that except, you know, history. You can go back and look at 30 year charts and see that, you know, usually the summer is the low for the mining sector and usually the winter, you know, the uh, December, January, February is usually, you know, when, when the mining sector is really doing well. This year was a little bit unique, you know, because I was expecting to see a big correction in June. And then, and, and quite honestly, well, everyone knows it didn't happen. The market just kept going and going and going. And it didn't start correcting until September. Um, you know, by that time, we've normally seen a couple of corrections because September, October as well aren't generally great uh, months for the equity market. So, you know, I'm expecting this correction to last probably a few more weeks. Uh, uh, you know, we got to probably get into October a little bit, and and usually November, December, January are really the great months uh, for, for you know these mining stocks. So uh, this is the time that investors need to be looking at. I think either adding to their positions or or taking positions in, in good companies. 
Uh, Keith, I want to talk to you about the Federal Reserve real quick. You know, the, the mining sector and the news, everybody's always looking for an excuse of why why is it slowing down or a correction or why is it going up? Why is gold going down? And of course, for the last year, run it going into the weeks before a Fed meeting, you know, gold's either up or gold's either down because, especially lately, because they think there's some sort of rate hike. Um, what kind of predicament is the Fed in? Do you think we are going to see interest rates go up? And if they do, how is that going to affect the mining shares and, and physical gold and silver? Well, you know, it's amazing to me that we're so driven by headlines. You know, it, it's really irrelevant, you know, what the Fed does. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, it, I wish they would just go raise the darn rate and just get it over and done with, you know, but they know that if they did that, um, uh, you know, they would probably implode the S&P. You know, the, the U.S. stock market is really the last market in the world that has not corrected. You know, you look at stock markets all over the planet, every, every stock market's down, you know, between 15 and 25%, and, and yet the U.S. equity market is buoyed up by, you know, this manipulation and, and, uh, you know, being an election year as well is, is even more uh, problematic because you've got, you know, Yellen there, who's a Democrat, who, you know, wants to see Hillary get uh, elected. So, you know, she surely doesn't want to see a uh, stock market crash during a Democratic government, you know, you know, potentially fueling more people to, you know, vote for um, uh, Trump. So, so you know, I, I think there's a lot, a lot to be said about, you know, the interest rates staying where they are uh, for at least the foreseeable future. But, um, you know, when we see the rates go up or whether we see the rates go down, uh, it's irrelevant to the price of gold. We're in the beginning of a bull market. Gold can go up in either a, a rising interest rate environment or a slowing interest rate environment. Uh, Keith, you've talked about silver being one of the most undervalued assets, one of the biggest no-brainers that so we will see triple-digit silver in this next bull run. Many investors have partnered with you with First Majestic Silver, First Mining Finance. Before we get into the updates of those companies that you run, I do want to ask you about a company that you have publicly stated you're going to be a, a significant shareholder. I personally, at a full disclosure to everybody, I have also purchased shares of the company and my, and my newsletter covers it, and that's Silver One. So for people looking for more silver exposure, um, you know, obviously everybody's seen this year, silver can go up 40%, but the mining stocks can go up four or five times that, maybe 10 times that. Uh, plus, uh, for silver one, what is your expectations of, of, uh, for this company, uh, that you have, uh, publicly stated that it, it is, it is going to be, um, something that's important in your portfolio to you? Yeah, and you're right about my comments regarding triple digit silver. You know, I'm a big believer in silver and, you know, so, and I've probably many of your listeners have heard me say probably a hundred times that, you know, I'm a big believer in ratios as well. You know, that, you know, we're currently mining nine to one. You know, three years ago we were mining eleven to one and then so the ratio's dropping. Uh, we've been in deficit for silver for, for decades now and, you know, it just it surprises me that, you know, you could mine Nine ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold on a global basis that you'd be trading at 70 to 1. That just doesn't make sense to me. So I believe I'm a bull on gold, but I'm even much more bull on silver. And, you know, the three assets that uh, Silver One purchased were, were originally in First Majestic Silver some years ago. And uh, we never got around to exploring them, uh, you know, just because First Majestic is a different company. You know, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, you know, producing silver company. It doesn't have the time to really do a lot of exploration work for, uh, on, on, on assets that's not producing from, you know, the exploration work that First Majestic does is always around its own, own mines and, and so on and so forth. So we sold those assets to First Mining Finance a few years ago and, uh, uh, first mining's business plan is to find partners and I was approached by a group, uh, uh, the Silver One group and, and they had an idea and, and I, I thought the idea was great because I do believe that there's a lack of really good silver exploration companies out there. And, uh, we did a deal whereby First Mining sold these uh, assets. So we're, we're very happy to, uh, be shareholders of Silver One and I personally became a shareholder of Silver One as well as a result of that. And I think they've got a heck of a shot. I think they're going to actually drill these assets finally. You know, these three pro properties 
have never had a drill hole in them uh, for at least uh, 20 years. So it would be really good to see uh, these drill holes actually executed because we know there's there's metal there. We just don't know how much there is. So they're going to go out there and, and drill these things out, and, and, and uh, I think there'll be good news flow, and I think that you're also going to see Silver One start to acquire other silver projects. And I think that's going to start to get quite exciting because they are able to build their asset base out over the next you know, months and year. You know, it, it is exciting to see this this young silver company, especially with the team that it has on it. Some some big heavyweights in the mining sector are running Silver One Resources. Um, moving on to first mining finance, this is almost a fruition of the business model, right? You have these assets Absolutely. now; you've handed them to uh, the project developers that are going to execute the the project and advance it. That's exactly the plan, and then uh, it's executing uh, as expected and as we've been telling everyone, and we'll continue to continue to do that with other projects and in first mining. If we could find a management team like find a management team that's running Silver One and duplicate that in some other projects, we'll be very very happy to do that. And if we do, I'll become shareholders of those companies as well. But uh, you know, Silver One is is I've got a heck of a shot at that. Uh, building out a very nice silver portfolio. There's a real lack of good silver companies in the marketplace. Keith, on first mining finance, uh, for the first year and a half, uh, massive acquisitions. I mean, you guys have pretty much, uh, when it comes to exploration companies or, or acquisition companies, one of the fastest growing gold developers on earth. Certainly in Canada, you guys have uh, be taken a dominant role. What 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 should be shareholders? Because many people listening to, to this show right now have taken a position in first mining finance. They have an en they have enjoyed the gains, the triple digit gains, and they've also enjoyed watching this company grow. I mean, every week, every month, you know, there's new acquisitions, new press releases. Uh, going forward, let's let's look forward for the next year. Uh, next two years, what should the expectations be? Is it still in acquisition mode, or are we now moving more closer to phase two? Well, investors have to, you know, learn to be patient. You know, the, the, the company's only been in in business for fifteen months or sixteen months, so it's a very, very early or very, very new company. And then, you know, if you look back at, at what I did in my previous companies, you know, it takes years to build a billion dollar company and then a number of things have to happen over that period of time. You know, First Mining Finance is run by obviously a very good team of individuals and we've been able to acquire a, an extremely, ex actually an extraordinary group of assets. Uh, you know, 28 projects, you know, 14 million ounces of gold, um, you know, in, in jurisdictions that, that are, you know, very safe and great infrastructure and, and, you know, a good chunk of the portfolio that First Mining owns today will become future mines as far as I'm concerned. But it's not going to happen tomorrow. You know, it, it takes time and then good partners take time to come in and, and, you know, I think that the metal price is going to go a lot higher over the next year or two. And I don't want to be too quick in, 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 in partnering out some of our projects because I think that we, you know, we could get much higher values for for much of our portfolio. So I'm going to be patient and find good partners uh, uh, to, to partner with to advance the portfolio. And as these partnerships uh, and announcements come out over time, you know, the share price will, of course, move, I would expect, uh, over that period. And we will, you know, continually move forward and then build what I, what I expect, you know, will become a billion-dollar company over the next few years. Certainly one of the more exciting companies, uh, without a doubt, since its launch. I mean, we've seen hostile takeovers. Uh, we've, we've we've seen many companies where you've just out, outright taken them over. Uh, well, no, Daniel, no, no one's done what we've done. There's not a single mining, co mining company in the planet that's bought eight companies in 13 months. Um, you know, the, and, and I... Uh, and, and what allowed that to happen is the perfect storm. And then, you know, all of, you know, many of your listeners probably know that the, you know, the equity markets in, in the gold sector got so ridiculously cheap that these companies that we bought were basically bankrupt. Uh, they, they had no real choice. And we, you know, when we put together our list of targets over the last couple of years, we actually, out of the eight companies that we actually ended up buying, Six of those companies were in our top 10 target list. So these are some of the best gold assets 
on the planet that we currently own in our portfolio. That's truly amazing. Uh, for First Majestic Silver, it's been a big winner for everybody. And uh, for silver investors uh, especially, when they, when they go looking around to purchase a silver producer, uh, they're, they're, we talked about this on our last interview. There really aren't that many. I mean, even everybody who thinks that they're silver producers or even the companies that are in like the silver ETF uh, for mining shares, uh, these companies, less than half their revenue actually comes from silver. They actually could be equally called a base metal mining company or a gold company. Uh, for First Majestic Silver, you're near right around 70% of revenues coming from silver. Uh, for people who own First Majestic Silver, I personally think the stock is, uh, I mean, if silver is going to triple digit, I can, I'm not going to put a price target on it, but I think First Majestic will go a lot higher. Uh, what should investors expect and what's a company update for First Majestic Silver? Well, you're right about the purity. It's something that is very, very important to me, you know, when we're looking at uh, acquiring things or when we're looking at, you know, expanding our our assets. You know, we're, we're doing an expansion right now at one of our mines, the Licantata mine. And once that expansion is completed, uh, which will be the by the third quarter of 2017, that mine will produce an extra one and a half million ounces of silver annually. So our purity will actually go from around 70% where it currently is to over 80%. So making us, you know, absolutely without a doubt, the pure silver company in the world. And it, it is quite shocking to me because when I put this company together 14 years ago, there was legitimately a handful of silver companies. And all those companies have become gold companies or base metal companies. And you talk to the executives that run those companies today, um, and they'll they'll be quite honest with you, and they'll say simply, we could not find silver mines, and in order for us to grow, we had to diversify into other metals. And that's the story. And that tells you right there that silver mines are rare animals and a lot rarer than people I don't think they are. And then First Majestic has a very, very unique portfolio of six producing silver mines, two development projects, which we hope to build over the next few years. You know, so within three to five years, I expect that we'll have eight producing silver mines in Mexico. And there's no one else uh, in the space that can say that. 